biggest lie you've ever read about yourself? That I've had plastic surgery. <laughs> That's the funniest thing in the entire world to me because puberty hit me so late. Yeah. Like I didn't like I didn't look like this until I was like 23. Oh, so they gave you they thought your glow up was. Oh my god! Everyone's <laughs> like, oh, he's got cheek fillers. He's got his lips done. That's a, hilarious. J whatever jawline I surgery. That is that a if thing, Aaron I wanted to make false and very damaging statements like that, that we should do it in court. Again, comedian, someone say something on a social media, on a non-traditional media platform, and defamation comes up. Do you see the pattern? Do you see the, you see the pattern? You see the thing? You see how it's all, it's, it's all like coming, it's like a full circle moment. It's a full circle. I am back, and I promise on this channel that we're gonna be talking about the laws related to content creators. I feel like there's not enough channels on YouTube helping content creators decode things like Federal Trade Commission disclosures if you're a US-based creator, defamation and libel, invasion of privacy, copyright, which you can and cannot do, various different laws that impact whether or not YouTube or TikTok is gonna be here next year and things like that. So that's what I do on this channel. If you're interested, I'm gonna invite you to subscribe. Um, today, I find there's a trend of comedians who are paid to be funny, who are paid to make fun of people who are being like upset because they don't like some of the things that uh, folks are saying about them albeit some of the things that people are saying about these comedians aren't necessarily the kindest sort of thing, but they don't say kind things in their stand-up routines either. Mm, let's discuss. So the two comedians I'm talking about this time is a recent case with Jimmy F Kimmel, who went to town with something he heard sold on a podcast. And so I think that's relevant because we're talking about content creators and the venues, the platforms that content creators usually on are non-traditional Platforms, not necessarily television or radio, magazine or print, we're usually on podcasts, YouTube, social media spaces. And the second one is Matt Reif, who is a comedian who rose in fame and popularity on social media, and in particular TikTok. I follow him. I find he's really, really funny versus something that some content creators have been saying about him regarding his looks. And as you don't know, Matt Wright is very attractive and he's well known not just for his chiseled figures, but in particular for his really strong jawline. And so he's not liking what some creators are saying about how he got that jawline. So if you're interested in those sort of topics, you want to stay tuned. World, let's discuss, shall we? All right. So Let's, let's start with the case that's a little bit older. So this predates the Cat Williams fiasco. This predates Kevin Hart suing Tasha K. Sometime in late November, early December, a couple of plastic surgeons took to their social medias to make fun of Matt Reif and suggest that they're the ones that are responsible for his jawline. And one particular comedian, actually Matt Reif, went to his comment sections and said, hey, it's illegal to make up facts about people, which is true. It's illegal because it is oh, defamation. If you say something about someone that rep damages reputation and you watch my first video in this little series talking about celebrity comedians versus content creators, I said that for the standard for celebrities is a little bit higher for a normal person, regular you and me. If someone says something that's untrue, that's really damaging and defamatory, we can sue. Celebrities, because they put themselves out in the public, you also have to prove it damages reputation. So if this guy is known for his great looks and one of the things you can punch back at him and say, well, you purchased those looks, that could damage his reputation, but I'm not quite sure if it rise to the level of winning a defamation claim so most likely and let's see the thing that down the street with your red lips and funky beat you better hold your head up to the sky i'm gonna roll with you to the day i die <laughs> so i think most people thought it was a joke and even though he didn't even directly name him though it's easy to assume that how many other really attractive celebrities, just celebrity comedians, just got popular enough and also kind of got, you know, was canceled. And if you don't know, if you're not following this, Matt Reif doing his Netflix specials made a joke that was really ugh, not in good taste. <laughs> I won't say the subject matter because I don't want to get demonetized. And a reaction when he, you can look it up, when people push back against that, he kind of doubled down and insulted a whole nother community. And so people are calling for him to be canceled. And so in the context of all of that, the fact pattern really fits Matt Reif. <laughs> so it really was him, but he didn't say it. Seeing call him out specific. In my opinion, my expert legal opinion, like I said, I am an attorney. I'm not your attorney, but for information purposes, I'm going to be giving my legal announcement assessment of these cases. 
then in that case, I don't think Matt Rife would have a case, even if he were to say that this was just true. And also, this 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 guy never said that he said it for fact. It was a joke. His personality is a caricature of himself. He's a serious doctor, I'm sure, when he's operating on his patients. But his social media persona is a, an entire different like caricature, and no one takes that seriously. He's like he's like he's like Dr. Seuss. He's like the Grinch. He's not a real person. Anyway, let's discuss Jimmy Kimmel, shall we? So Jimmy Kimmel versus Aaron Rodgers, an NFL player. So what happened is a couple of times Jimmy Kimmel on his stand-up, um, on his show, has poked at Aaron Rodgers for Aaron Rodgers' beliefs and things that Aaron Rodgers have, has done during a, a tumultuous time in our U.S. history that I shall remain nameless because I don't want to use those terms on this channel and keep them monetized. Um, so when he made those jokes, essentially insinuated that Aaron Rodgers is like, follows conspiracy theories. Aaron Rodgers didn't like that. So when, a, again, another infamous topic came up recently about a person who's no longer with us, who is known for really bad things, and his 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 uh, colleague who is also already in jail for things, really bad things, um, there was a list about people who are associated with him who may have traveled through aeronautical means um, to this remote location and that list was going to be published and so Aaron Rodgers went on the ESPN podcast and said that Jimmy Kimmel is going to be praying that his name is not on it. Jimmy Kimmel responded during his stand-up on Monday. And when he did and then it did come out and of course my name wasn't on it and isn't on it and won't ever be on. I'm not on a list. I was not on a plane or an island or anything ever and I suggested that if Aaron wanted to make false and very damaging statements like that, that we should do it in court so he could share his proof with like a judge. Because, you know, when you hear a guy who won a Super Bowl and did the, all the State Farm commercials say something like this, a lot of people believe it. A lot of delusional people honestly believe I am meeting up with Tom Hanks and Oprah at Shakey's once a week to eat pizza and drink the blood of children. And I know this because I hear from these people often. My wife hears from them. My kids hear from them. My poor mailman hears from these people. And now we're hearing from lots more of them, thanks to Aaron Rodgers, who I guess believes one of two things. Either he actually believes my name was going to be on Epstein's list, which is insane, or the more likely scenario is he doesn't actually believe that. He just said it because he's mad at me for making fun of his top knot and his lies about being bad. Said, hey, 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 hey. Don't damage my reputation. Just impact my children. You're putting our lives at threat. That's serious. And if you have any truths, let's meet in court. So Aaron Rodgers said this before the list came out. Timmy Kimmel took him to task and say, do you have anything? Meet me in court. So he essentially said, I'm going to be suing you for defamation. So again, comedian, someone say something on a social media, on a non-traditional media platform, and defamation comes up. Do you see the pattern? Do you see the, you see the pattern? You see the thing? You see how it's all, it's, it's all like coming. It's like a full circle moment. It's a full circle. <laughs> anyway, so he said these things, and um, yeah, and so people are just like, ooh, ooh, ooh. It's just like back and forth, back and forth. Um, but Timmy Kimmel said, I'm not going to sue you so long as you apologize. So Aaron Rodgers did not apologize, but the last thing, the last thing we heard, he said that he understands how that's kind of damaging to say that. And he must have lawyered up and said that I never said this was fact. Yeah. I totally understand how serious an allegation would be. So for him to be upset about that, I get it. Did you watch the quote? Because that's exactly what I said. Verbatim what I said on the show. Okay? I'm not stupid enough, even though you think I'm an idiot, and you made a lot of comments about my intelligence, but I'm not stupid enough to accuse you of that with absolutely zero evidence, uh, concrete evidence. It, that's ridiculous. Again defamation starts as you have to be saying something if it's fact he said i was just joking around i was just saying these things and these things can me suggesting sort of things and i understand how that's bad and so yeah 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 yeah. so he was kind of like yeah it was not it's not good i meant no harm so it's kind of like that's the end of that but if if they were to take it to court i think this you know he didn't say anything as if it was fact he just suggested like oh he should want to hope that his name is on the list I don't think that rises to the to the level of being a defamatory statement. I think that was kind of like, again, it's kind of like opinion. And anything I've said through all of these videos, and I'm going to be pivoting to actually telling you about how to manage your 
YouTube channel, <laughs> I'm not just really talking about celebrities, is that once you mention, when you talk about in terms of your opinion and your thoughts and your opinions, you're sort of clear. You sort of say, this is my thought on this. This is my opinion on this rumor that exists. Not that it's facts, but there's a rumor that exists and these are my thoughts on it. And this is what I like to say. And this is just joking. I'm just playing around. But I think people just on pins and needles because folks don't play around anymore. People get serious. And, you know, when folks, their th death threats, um, there are people like, you know, taking these taking these things really really seriously you can't just joke around I mean though they're comedians um they are people too so I'm not making light of their hurt and their pain so anyway I hope there's lesson there now if you're interested in um more content like this or you want to see the rest of these videos that I mentioned and during this video you can check it out here in this playlist and I'll see you in the next video when I'm definitely going to be giving you some advice to creators who are reaction channels or who may use other people's content to show you how to do it the right way and not get in trouble and to get, not get demonetized and possibly qualify for the YouTube Partner Program and also just be safe, safer than not. Again, I'm not your attorney, but I'm going to be giving you my opinion and my assessment. So if you're interested in that, stay tuned, subscribe. Let's discuss it below. Do you think these comedians are just being sensitive? Do you think they have the right? Do you think people are crossing the lines? I don't know. What, what do you think?